Hello and thank you for watching this week's vlog. Well Anthony's in work so I thought I would take this opportunity to welcome you to our channel. We've also got a lot of new subscribers so welcome. If you're very new to the channel or fairly new to the channel please let us know where you're from. We have got viewers from places like Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Sweden, Switzerland and even Israel so please let us know where you're from and whether you live in a house or in an arrowboat that would be good to know as well. Well on this week's vlog we start our journey at the beginning of the Ashton Canal and we found this canal really difficult compared even to the uh, Rochdale 9. It, uh, there was a lot of broken glass about and we had to watch Dexter which was a real shame but we did meet some lovely people along the way. Lock 13 was very difficult and you'll see why later on in the vlog we lost a couple of fenders. I actually our rope fenders are attached with plastic ties to the side of the boat so I think what we need to do is to take those off and attach them with rope so we can take the rope fenders up. We had a very scary night staying by the Etihad Stadium. Well I wasn't bothered but Anthony was but it was getting very dark and very late so we just had to stop where we were and moor up for the night and set off early the next day and there were no incidents so everything was fine. We had friends come and meet us at the very top of the Ashton flight just as we turned onto the Peak Forest Canal and uh, they gave us a lift back. That was Fiona and Jude from Fettlers so thank you very much you two. It was really nice to see you both and spend some time with you. And Fiona very kindly offered to run me back to the car which was in Boothstown and it took three days to get from Boothstown and the narrow boat up until the very start of the Peak Forest Canal and it was amazing and crazy that it only took 23 minutes in the car. I couldn't believe it. Well Anthony's doing much better. Thank you for all those people that asked how he's doing after he got shingles. His medication was really effective and he has been catching up on his sleep. So Anthony gave me his what three words location and we got back to the narrowboat later that day and I had a bad feeling about the place he'd chosen to moor. Sorry a boat going past. Morning. You can see how much the boat rocks now as a boat goes past even though it's in takeover. <laughs> Oh yeah, so as I was saying, uh, Anthony picked this location which looked nice, it was just before lift bridge number one and it was sort of in the Duckenfield area just past Portland Basin but unfortunately I had a bad feeling about the place and there was a police incident that night and you'll see what happened later on in the vlog. Well we only stayed the one night and decided to set off the next day and head towards... Uh, where was it? Hortondale Nature Reserve and that was a really good location that we stayed at for quite a few days. It was starting to get late in the day by this point and as you can see the light is starting to fade so we did start thinking about somewhere to moor. It's Easter Sunday and we're just leaving this pound. It's half past eight in the morning. It was getting really dark last night, so we moored up here. I know you shouldn't, but we knew if we got off early, we wouldn't be in the way of any boats mooring up on the lock landing. I've got to admit, these four locks were really well maintained around Sports City. They operated almost like new. The one good thing is, these fill really quickly.
I think the three of us had had enough by now of city life and police sirens and we just couldn't wait to get back out into the countryside. Richard be singing at this point. <laughs> Nobody needs to hear the hats. <laughs> what, you singed in or Richie? Both. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry Richie. <laughs> Morning. Morning. <laughs> We've been cruising for about an hour and a half and I think half an hour after setting off even after removing a load of rubbish from the prop this morning been down the weed hatch again and pulled this out of the prop probably wondering what's going through our heads when we enter areas like this. Are we regretting selling the house and moving on to an narrowboat? But it's all part of the adventure and even going through the suburban areas and the outer city areas it's the contrast between that and the countryside and it just feels like you've had one big adventure at the end of the day. The three ladies we met here who were jogging stopped in the tracks to watch the boat go through the locks. They said they hadn't seen it before and they were so curious about our lifestyle and living aboard a narrow boat. It was just lovely to meet them. Well, we've passed the Etihad Stadium at Manchester, where we stayed close by overnight. It was okay for one night, I don't think I'd like to stay any longer, but it was getting dark. Uh, we're now at Lock 10. We're, off, we're on the Ashton Canal. These locks are very deep, but very narrow. They do fill fairly quickly. 
they've got a different anti-vandal locking system than we're used to but it's like that all the way from Manchester City centre and up this way I think our best place of more last night would have been at Piccadilly for some moorings there might look really nice but we didn't know the area so we kept going I tell you what who needs a gym when you're doing the locks this is the best workout I've had for ages all those pies and cakes we've been eating over winter <laughs> we need to work them off I've told you before that I'm not good with heights, but I found as I walk along this lock, as long as I look towards the full part of the lock, I don't feel too bad. So this is lock 13 by the Strawberry Duck. If you're coming through this way, it's very narrow. And one of the gates doesn't open all the way, so we've lost a couple of fenders. I'm trying not to show the shopping trolley that's in the middle of the canal. There was a police incident at this point and we decided to move the next day. Believe it or not, this is just hours later on the same day. We decided to reverse back just a half mile or so to Portland Basin to the water point rather than go all the way down to Marple Junction. Well, we're having to reverse to the water point in this marina because the next one is through the 16 locks at Marple to get to Marple Junction and we don't want to go that far today.
I've left a tiny bit. You're right there. Left towards me. You're okay there now. That's Dex Deacon here panting and not Anthony. You okay on your side? Yep, plenty of it. Got about six inches on my side. You alright? Hiya. Hiya. <coughs> Watch your camera. We got onto the Peak Forest yesterday, about half past five, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really, really tight getting onto it. Uh, we took the, well, you took the Wi-Fi aerial down. <coughs> I only took, what? Well, I took the cover off. The Wi-Fi aerial is still intact. Um, but I don't think you can buy just the covers for it, which is a bit of a shame. So it looks like I'm going to have to buy the whole, the thing. whole unit again. It's working, but it's got a plastic bag over it, which doesn't look great. <laughs> Very classy. Um, it's a shame, last night it looked nice when we just turned on to the <coughs> Peak Forest last night and just before the first lift bridge but then there was a lot of commotion last night and the police were out apparently somebody was trying to break in one of the units nearby They tried to escape by jumping in the canal yeah. the police had flashlights um, in the woods and were like get out! There were about three police cars yeah, weren't there? Bit of excitement but just a little bit too much excitement. I think I don't think I wanted more there another night because I was yeah. a bit nervous then to be honest. I slept really well. I didn't. You, you didn't. No, not at all. <laughs> but we thought it's best to move on and a couple of our friends said it's probably better going a couple of miles further on than where we were last night. Which is a shame because they looked lovely didn't they? It did, it was beautiful. Yeah. I absolutely love these old snail bridges that allowed the horses to walk under the bridge, over the canal and back down the other side without being untied.
We'd like to thank all of our patrons and a big hello to our new patrons who are Andy Ford, Peter Scott and Marjorie Sullivan. Thank you so much for your support. Well, we hope you enjoyed the vlog. So a big thank you from myself, from Anthony and Dexter. Please subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help our channel. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next week.